Roll up, roll up! The carnival! And welcome to Wrestle Carnivals Beyond the Canvas. It's Kate Johansson. Today, we've got a special guest, somebody that's works with a mental health brand, Blokes. He's the founder, Tom Ho. Tom, thanks for coming on. No, thanks for having me, mate. I really appreciate it. Really excited. Uh, when I saw the partnership of yourself and Wrestle Carnival, it was like, great, Gary's doing the right things. I think mental health and wrestling, does it can go hand in hand for what yeah. the guys do on the road to put on these wrestling shows. Yeah. It can be very taxing for them, and it's great to have an outlet for yourself, especially for men's mental health. I think something that it's getting more recognition, but it's still nowhere near how it needs to be. Um, like Suicide's still the biggest killer for men, um, and I think that needs to change. So it's good that yourself... Uh, Gary Wrestle Carnival, you can give that safe space, that outlet for the men that's inside the squared circle. So, props to you on that. No, thank you. No, I, I think you're completely right. I think men's mental health, in particular, it is something that's becoming kind of more common conversation. But you know, I still think there is a long way to go, and there's kind of, there's a lot more work to do around that stigma. Um, so, you know, massively feel massively fortunate to be involved with Gary and, and everyone involved with Wrestle Carnival and, you know, really looking forward to doing some great stuff in the new year. Yeah, definitely. Um, but before we get into um, the whole concept of blokes and what you're hoping to do, like you mentioned before we started recording, you're passionate about wrestling. Mm -hmm. So when did that passion begin? So it's quite funny, actually. I was thinking about this the other day. Um because I obviously knew I was coming on, so I, I thought this would probably be one of the questions that came up. And do you know what? It's quite funny because no one in my family is a wrestling fan at all. And I kind of, I came across wrestling a bit by accident. It was, um, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was probably when I was about 10 or 11 years old. And I was just flicking through Sky Sports, trying to find some football or some rugby or something to watch. And I came across an episode of WWE SmackDown and immediately just was just like, hooked on it and I can remember the match it was it was Booker T versus Chris Benoit and it was and it was yeah I don't know there was something about it there was something about the atmosphere the athleticism just yeah I don't I do you know I actually can't put my finger on what it was specifically but as soon as I I kind of just sat and watched the full episode that was it I was begging my parents to buy me tickets to live events I was begging them to buy me the the plastic rings and and, and the uh, you know the wrestling figures and yeah, literally ever since then, I've just been so, yeah, just it's something that's kind of carried on. And, you know, while I may not have kind of the, I suppose, the historic wrestling knowledge that a lot of passionate wrestling fans do, you know, I do try and keep myself up to date with certainly everything that's going on. Um, you know, and particularly with, with British wrestling in particular, I think that's something that certainly since I've been a wrestling fan, I, I've noticed has just gone, you know, shot up and it's become so much more, um, I suppose, advertised so much more watched and I think it's just become so much more of an actual a route into the big time professional wrestling promotions um whereas I think you know a couple of people may agree I think probably 10-15 years ago that probably wasn't the case you know it was very much WWE was the be all and end all whereas now you know you've got like um ICW and stuff like that and I think I think that's a it's it's something that's really growing and it's been it's been you know as a as a self-proclaimed passionate wrestling fan, it's been great to see that. Yeah, definitely. I think the the boom period was incredible. You've got a lot of companies here in the UK um, mm. that have been growing and growing and growing and giving people that platform where <clears throat> if WWE is their goal, great. We've had people on the British wrestling scene mm -hmm. still not signed to a company but turned mm. down that opportunity because it wasn't what they wanted. They've yeah. enjoyed the independence. And mm -hmm. now with Wrestle Carnival starting up as well, I know what... Gary was capable of doing in his last venture where um, he put on some incredible matches yeah. and made some memorable moments, whether it was Hangman Page randomly appearing to challenge Pack a couple of days before their double on. I think like this supposed match that I was supposed to have. Yeah. Um, or it was like Rampage Brown, the sound of NXT UK now, which is mm -hmm. great to me, best wrestler in Europe. Putting him against Shuji Ishikawa or Joe Doran yeah. were fantastic matches and like 
I'm excited to see what will happen with Wrestle Carnival. And recently, there's been a lot going on, a lot of people suffering with mental health, men and women, just because of certain disgusting actions um, that have been like put on us from different people within the wrestling world. And yeah, like thankfully they're getting outed. They're no longer part of the wrestling scene. And Mm -hmm. I think it's important that we do have that safe space and for people that may be struggling, um, whether it's because of that or other mental health, whether it's addiction and we're gambling or drinking or anything like that, it's good to have you on board as an outlet for them. Yeah, you know, I I completely agree. And I think, I mean, over the last couple of months in particular, it's been great even to see probably some of the most well-known wrestlers in the world, like Alistair Black and, and Leo Rush and all those kind of guys just actually openly admitting that, you know, they have been through their rough patches and, you know, they have suffered their own kind of bouts of mental health. And I think that in particular you know, those examples are, are kind of great ways of taking that first step into making conversations around mental health more common practice in wrestling. Um, and again, you're completely right, especially with, with the kind of addiction side of stuff. You know, the amount of stories you'll read about wrestlers that are di- addicted to painkillers or, you know, addicted to steroids or whatever it may be. So, you know, I really do think, like you said at the start of the podcast, I think wrestling and mental health, men's mental health in particular, it does go hand in hand. Yeah, definitely. And I think for a lot of people, whether that's people actually wrestling or fans, Mm. wrestling is an outlet for their mental health. Yeah. Uh, And it has been for myself when I've struggled in the past. And um, I've, when I did my public speaking, I used to travel around speaking about my mental health, speaking about trying to help people overcome it. And some people just couldn't find that outlet to help them overcome their mental health. Whereas I think when people are using wrestling as an escapism as for the mental health, and then a company so open about men's mental health as wrestle carnival are going to be, Uh and then saying, Hey, we're working with blokes as well. I think that's just, that's only going to be a massive positive for mental health going forward in British wrestling. Yeah, definitely. And you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, you've heard all the conversations happening you know, throughout the, the both national lockdowns in the UK, people saying stuff like, you know, people don't have that ritual of going to the football on a Saturday or going to the rugby with their mates or going to the pub to watch the sport or whatever it may be. But, you know, but that, that's, that can be, like you just said, completely applied to the wrestling community. You know, going to those live shows and just actually being amongst those like-minded people can, you know, for a lot of people, that kind of is their, like you said, you know, that is their outlet, that is their safe space. And I think, you know, I think a lot of people really will have kind of missed, I suppose, missed that, um, yeah, that environment and missed that kind of opportunity to kind of just let loose and be themselves and just be around something that they're incredibly passionate about. Yeah, definitely. So with that being said, like during these lockdowns, what wrestling have you been watching? What have you been enjoying? So I've actually been pretty hooked on AEW I'm not gonna lie um mm-hmm. and also NXT I think you know yeah. for, for me I know that's probably like really mainstream to say those two <laughs> but you know I think in particular um I think AEW have recruited some ridiculously good talents and you know again again with NXT I just think they're you know, I'm I, I what I really enjoy seeing is the difference between NXT and you know, like say Raw or SmackDown or something like that. Because for me, NXT kind of has its roots really embedded in the indie scene, and that's what I really, really like. Um, you know, and it's like you know, again, interviews I've heard in the past, you know, people like, um, say the Young Bucks or Kenny Omega or someone like that have said, you know, they've had offers on the table from WWE. But you know they don't they don't want to go there. They want to keep working the the independent scene, and they like the freedom to kind of travel between promotions and do you know kind of do what they want to do and mold their career in the way they want to do that. And for me, I, I, for me, I think NXT is almost like it's kind of a it, for me it's a best of both worlds because yeah. I think obviously you know it has it is synonymized and it is it is a product of the WWE, but I think. If you look at the matches compared to the likes of Raw and SmackDown to something like NXT or NXT UK, 
I I just think the NXT matches are just so much more entertaining and just you even I mean you even got to compare like Takeover to something like like SummerSlam or Hell in a Cell or any of the other kind of main roster pay per views. I mean it's just it's just streets ahead. Um, and again, I think AEW. I think the only thing I don't like about AEW, and I'm going to put this out there, is the fact that I I think they have I don't think they've established their mid card very well at the moment, which is, for me is a bit of a bit of a problem. Uh, and I mean, obviously, it was great to see Darby Allen win the TNT title, um, but yeah, I don't know. I think if you look at all the other all the other male champions in the promotion, it's all very much part of the Cody Rhodes kind of inner circle type thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I but you know, in terms of actually being a competitive product against WWE, I think they're absolutely smashed it out of the park. Yeah, I think they've done fantastic, especially with this like last week's, uh, this past week's um, AEW with a certain debut, and then mm-hmm. going to be partnering with um, Impact. So I think yeah, it's it's very exciting, and it's good to see that during. 2020 wrestling still being able to do memorable moments like the Sting debut or Edge returning, Daniel Bryan, mm-hmm. um, and it's it is it has been fantastic. Like, who do you enjoy watching? Like, I know you mentioned the brands, but is there any wrestlers that are particularly standing out? Yeah, so for me, there's kind of there's been one wrestler in particular. He just happens to be British, but there is one wrestler in particular that I. I mean, I, I I love his story more than anything else. Um, Drew Galloway, I, I I just think the guy has, you know, after being released from WWE a couple of years ago, after he went through that absolute shambolic phase of like 3MB, uh, yeah. you know, to then really establish himself on the indie scene and come back as a completely rejuvenated character, I just think... Yeah. He's such a great example of why you should never stop doing what you love and never stop trying to, I suppose, never never listen to anybody who doubts you. And I know it may sound like I'm just saying that to be cliche, but I'm, I'm not. I mean, I remember going to um, like Northumbria Student Union when I was at uni there and watching him in WCPW. Like, it's, I just think to see him go from where he was to where he is now for me, it's just incredible. Um, so he's one. And another wrestler I would say I'm, I'm really enjoying watching at the moment is Mox. I just think John Moxley is incredible. I think he's, I, I think he's the best entertainer, best wrestler on the planet, personally. Um, and again, another one. Again, sorry, it's mainstream, but I will never, ever as long as I'm a wrestling fan, never not be a fan of AJ Styles. I think he is just <laughs> phenomenal. Phenomenal. That's the only word you can use to describe him. He honestly is. He could honestly he could wrestle anybody and it'd be a five star match in my in my eyes. I think what I mean what he did when he was part of TNA or Ring of Honor, Bullet Club, WWE, wherever he's been, whatever he's done, he's just killed it and he's just he's just put on like just good matches and matches you want to watch over and over and over again. Yeah, and it's a, it's a different AJ Styles that we see in WWE. Like he's had mm-hmm. to adapt to what he's shown that he's been able to. Um, part of me thinks like they probably never thought he would be as big and as successful as he has been, but he's proven everybody all the doubt is wrong. And mm-hmm. yeah, he's doing some absolutely incredible stuff at the moment. So I want to get into the like inception of like blokes like. What? How come you ended up founding founding it? So um, I was diagnosed myself with uh, depression, anxiety, and PTSD as I just started my second year at Northumbria Uni. Um, you know, I I don't doubt that I, I kind of started my mental health journey years before that, but I never really, I suppose, acknowledged it. Yeah. So. I went from playing rugby at uni, you know, socialising with friends all the time, seeing my family all the time to really being very introverted, being overly paranoid, really excessively kind of overcritical as to everything I said, everywhere I went, everything I did, every decision I made. It was like having this constant battle in my own mind. And yeah, it ended up getting to the point where, you know, I wasn't going to my lectures. Um, 
and I didn't I, I was what I was barely leaving the house and yeah it, it kind of really it really kind of knocked me for six and I think I think for me I kind of as most men do tried to deal with it on my own because you know typical reasons I didn't want to be seen as weak I didn't want to be seen as you know the guy with mental health or the guy with depression or oh you know we've got to be careful what we do or say around Tom you know I, I was always scared that I was going to be looked at differently by by my friends and family um and I think it was only when I kind of got to my real crisis point and I actually, I had no other option but to admit to my family my, or my parents that I was, I was struggling and I needed some help that I, you know, I felt like this huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders and, you know, went down the classic routes, went to the GP, got put on antidepressants, um, tried loads of different types of professional services like CBT and counselling, hypnotherapy, all these different kind of approaches. And I think at the time, mentally, I wasn't prepared to engage with them. So I maybe didn't get the benefit out of them. But the one thing that I did get the benefit out of was just talking to other guys who could, could relate to what I was going through. Other guys who had kind of I suppose other guys who had walked in my shoes and it, you know, wasn't necessarily for the same reasons, but, you know, if I, if I told them about the thoughts I was having or how I was feeling, you know, they had been in that position to kind of understand, you know, and that kind of took, and I kind of had these conversations in like going to little sessions in like village halls, you know, it very much was the typical and, you know, guy sitting around in a circle you know introducing yourself and just sort of saying you know hi I'm Tom and you know blah 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 all that kind of stuff and I think for me although you know I still kind of had my ups and downs at uni I kind of really I saw the benefit of how much talking and just being honest really kind of helped me get through my bad stages so I think ever since then, I was really keen to maybe try and encourage men to, to kind of do the same. And I think for me, I kind of, I, I founded Blokes uh, in June this year. So still quite a new kind of platform. But one of the kind of things that I wanted to do through Blokes was provide like a, a forum based service where you can create, you can create a Blokes account on the Blokes website completely free. Um, and, you know, you can join this kind of online forum based community where you can share experiences, you can ask questions, you can share advice, whatever it may be. Um, and I think for me, I've always kind of seen blokes as wanting to be provide men with that kind of option of taking that first step into acknowledging their mental health. Um, because, yeah. you know, I think for a lot of guys, especially of the older generation, you know, if you are feeling a certain way it can be so hard for you to have those initial conversations and you know you know, you might not want to have those conversations initially with your with your wife or your husband or your friends or whoever it may be so for me I always kind of wanted blokes to be a space where you know if somebody has been struggling through the lockdown they can jump on there and say oh look lads I've been having a rough couple of weeks um you know I've been made I've been furloughed or I've been made redundant and I'm just not really feeling myself you know that it's kind of an outlet for them to get that off their chest um so that's essentially kind of what what blokes is and and, and what blokes aims to be and I think for me I think for me I've always kind of yeah I'm a very open person in terms of talking about my mental health because I ultimately if I can help one person that for me is an absolute win um and yeah I just I think you know the, the stats around male suicide like you say men's uh, suicide is the biggest killer of men under 45 in the UK um so I think there's still a very you know we're still at crisis point where yes mental health is bit men's mental health is being spoken about more openly but you know, we're still not at a point where we can say that we've we found a solution because we clearly haven't. No, I've, I've got to agree. And I think we need to kind of like uh, reconstruct society, essentially. The whole um, men don't cry, boys don't cry mm -hmm. sort of mentality or one time I hate man up. Yeah. 
think it's a, it's a disgusting like term and <clears throat> it's something that I'd had all the way through um like growing up and stuff and I'm I'm an empath myself mm-hmm. and so I kind of pick up on other people's emotions yeah. and I'm, I'm a very emotional person and again had my own mental health struggles where similar to yourself where I just felt like I couldn't I couldn't talk to anybody and I'd had it on and off for a few different years and then it was again crisis point I think the fiance just kept seeing me break down over nothing yeah. like I could be just watching tv and then I'd go <laughs> and then it was and I'll speak up and up about it whilst from the discussion like it was the point where my family finally found out just how bad it was when it was suicide attempts and my mum yeah. found me had to take me to hospital and hospital was like look the only way you, you're going to be let go is if you agreed to counseling and yeah again it was it was really hard like because it it's, it was hard to open up it was hard to feel like I was weak and it's something I say to all the people that I work with that struggle with mental health and like well I'm not going on medication or I'm not doing counseling and stuff if you break your arm or, or break your leg or something yeah. like that you're going to take painkillers and you're going mm-hmm. to physio on it so just treat these the medications, the painkillers, medications yeah. trying to ease all that that's going on in your head and the whether it's counseling or CBT or anything like that, treat that as your physiotherapy. Like yeah. just because we can't see it visually unless you are breaking down and your um hygiene's going or like yeah. you care for yourself's going, it doesn't mean it's not there. And people do need to speak more openly about it. Yeah, no, you're completely right. And you know, I know, I know it's a bit of a weird thing to kind of bring in, but it kind of even, you know, when you when you see signs on like public toilet doors saying, you know, on the on the kind of um, disabled toilets saying, um, you know, not all disabilities are kind of a visual, you know, you can't see them. I think that for me, while it may not strictly be talking just purely about mental health problems, I think I think that's so true. I think. You know, unless you're, like you said, unless you're physically sat there bawling your eyes out or physically, you know, laying in bed, having not showered or having not eaten or having not done anything for a week. I think people don't necessarily understand that mental health isn't something that always shows on the surface. It's very much something that can can bubble away for a long, long time. And, you know, I think for a lot of guys, that is almost the problem is because they go so long without talking about it. And I think they try and take the weight of the world on their shoulders it kind of and they just they push it further and further to the back of their mind I think it does end up bubbling away and often it can it can come out in the wrong ways or it can come out you know all at once whatever it may be and so yeah I I think it's so important that we you know it's that classic phrase you know it's so important that we acknowledge that yeah we we all have mental health um and you know like like you said you know if you if you sprained your ankle or if you broke your arm or whatever it was you would you would go and see a specialist about it you would go and see a doctor about it so you know there's absolutely no shame in doing the same for for what's going on in your head yeah definitely and if if people are like trying to speak out and if if you are subject to this uh, man up or stuff like that like try and cut out the toxic like the toxic nature in your life i know it can be hard um again something i've had to do where it was a case of actually this person that's supposed to be like a good friend or something like that is quite toxic to yeah. life and it's important it's important to do that and it's why again I speak so openly about it, a bit like yourself when mm-hmm. when I went through it all I'd speak openly about everything and I had a couple of people message me or I even had somebody that I didn't have on Facebook message me and it was his yeah. partner that had seen it and was like hey why don't you reach out to this guy mm-hmm. and people can talk about it so I think the fact that you're doing a forum with blokes is incredible and needed and can people do it anonymously I know not everybody's at that point where they want their name attached yeah, to speak and still want somebody to speak to yeah so basically all all the information that's required to create a blokes account is an email address a password and you can set your username to whatever it is that you may want it to be because I I fully appreciate that you know, not a lot of men, you know, they might not want to stick Joe Bloggs as their name, you know, and everybody yeah. knows who they are. You know, they might want to put, I don't know, JB 2020, whatever it may be. I don't know. But 
you know, but they do, I think one of the good things is they do have the ability to change that. So if, you know, over the time they do, I suppose, grow in confidence and grow in, um, I suppose, grow in the knowledge that, you know, they are amongst like-minded people who only actually want to help. You know, they may want to change that back to Joe Blogs or whatever it may be. Yeah, definitely. And I think one thing, um, again, I don't know if you'd have gone through it yourself, was when when I did that first post, a lot of people, work colleagues, was, I would never have thought you'd gone through that or I'd never thought you that's what you're yeah. suffering because you're always so smiley. And it was a case yeah. of, well, I feel absolutely shit. So if I can make somebody laugh during the day, and that like, gives you some sort of purpose or whatever, and it's just not wanting. And it was wearing that mask. And I think in professional wrestling, a lot of people wear that mask because they're playing this character and they're playing this gimmick. I feel a lot of the time they'll be able to hide behind that gimmick a lot. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's why people don't realise that these are people, like social media is so toxic. Some of the cyberbullying that goes on there and all this hate speech that goes on towards different professional it's wrestlers, crazy. they've got to realise it's not a character. It's not as if you're slagging off Captain America or you've just read a book and you hate this character. They're real it's, people. They're real people and people don't understand that. Like, um, for example, I saw Otis and Tucker had split up uh-huh. and Tucker was... Um, he didn't have any entrance music. It was basic attire, and he lost rel- relatively quickly to Ricochet. And somebody was like, huh, he's getting fired soon. And he replied, and was like, dude, like, I've got a family. Like, I need to provide for. And it's it's what I don't like about it. And I think more and more wrestlers speaking about it, it's only a positive thing. And so many people have been so brave, and it's been so empowering and great to see. But I feel like some, again, they've constantly got that mask on so to give him an anonymous outlet to speak about it it's going to be incredible so with that being said what are you going to be doing with wrestle carnival exclusively like what are your plans in um getting more people to reach out and like kind of embrace the mental health embrace that's what they're dealing with and trying to overcome it well i think obviously first and foremost is we kind of want to you know we want to kind of provide that uh, that platform for for the talent and for also the the staff and the fans and whoever it may be associated with Wrestle Carnival, and we want to kind of reinforce this message that you know if you are struggling with your mental health or if you need somewhere to just vent about how you're feeling or what's been going on, you know all you have to do is literally just pick up your phone, go on the bloke's website, create your account, and you know you can you can just let it all out. Um, I think Gary and I are going to have some some pretty exciting conversations in the coming new year about you know what what it is that we we can do together or what it is that we want to be doing together, um, and I think one of the best things as well is obviously, you know I appreciate that you know women's mental health is just as important as men's you know absolutely one hundred percent, and the good thing is so we're partnered with a women's mental health charity called This Girl, um, so obviously if any talent or any fans or anybody associated with Wrestle Carnival kind of need, oh, sorry, any any kind of women associated with Wrestle Carnival, whatever it may be, kind of feel that they need that support or need that outlet, we have the facilities to point them in the right direction, something that is probably um, not more suitable, but definitely more maybe tailored to their community needs. Yeah, oh, fantastic. It's great to see that outlet. And cause you, you do see a lot where people are like, well, women are capable of, like the mental health and again it's not saying that you don't and it's good that we're still promoting that it's just we've spoken about the facts the facts are there it's still the biggest killer in men and um there is that stigma and it's been great like this past year or so people have been speaking more openly about it and although it's not making the changes that we need it's going in the right direction so again i think having yourself connected with wrestling where to be fair i think probably most people associated with wrestling probably did struggle with mental health. I just yeah. think that's why everybody's so passionate about it because of the escapism it um, gives them. So where, if people are listening, where can they find and register with blokes then? So we're on Twitter and Instagram. We're at underscore blokes, or you can log on to www.blokes.life. Um, you can have a look at all the, all our fantastic ambassadors, um obviously that you can have find more information about the partnership with wrestle carnival and you know as i said you can find you can find that forum you can find that space um and yeah you know any man who's listening who 
feels that they need they need to talk or they need an outlet where they can just just be honest and just admit that they're struggling, admit that they might need some help. I urge you to to join our community. You'll find nothing but love and support. And um, yeah. No, fantastic. Everybody do make sure you go and um, check that out. And if even if that's not the outlet you're wanting to go down, if, if you are struggling, just remember it's okay to talk. That's why with blokes, it's a capital O and a capital K. Just to emphasize that it is okay to talk. It is okay not to be okay. Just because it's not visual doesn't mean it's not there. So do seek out help, whether that's for your GP or counselling services or from um, fantastic brands like Blokes. Uh, so Tom, like, again, I think it's amazing that you partnered with uh, Wrestle Carnival. Um, I really love being able to speak about it. So openly and passionately, I think it's something that does need to happen a lot more. So I'm excited to see what yourself and Gary can come up with in terms of creating more awareness within the wrestling um, scene, especially here in Britain, uh, regarding men's mental health and mental health in general. No, mate, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me about it. You know, I, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed just, just chewing the fat with you and just being honest. And I think I just want to say how amazing I think it is that Gary and Wrestle Carnival are being so forward thinking about the mental health of the talent, the mental health of the audience, the mental health of everybody associated with Wrestle Carnival. Um, and I think they really are setting a fantastic example for not just British promotions, but promotions all over the world. Yeah, I've got to agree. Hopefully more companies will look to see what he's doing. And um, with things like Wrestle Cares, um, I, sp- I recently spoke to Dan French mm-hmm. about all the stuff that they're doing there. So the supporting the children, the supporting the mental health, the working with equity to make sure there's going to be a safe space as well. So, yeah, it's incredible to see. And I'm excited to see what Wrestle Carnival do going forward. And again, like all the best in terms of blogs. If there's anything I can do in help in terms of promoting, feel free to reach out because I think what you're doing is incredible. And it's great to see that you've taken your own struggles and although it never really goes away and we can have the good days and bad days, yeah. you're still taking your struggles and turned into an amazing thing for other people that are going through similar things. So hats no, off. Thank you, man. I appreciate the support a lot. So everybody, make sure you do support Tom. Go make sure you check out blokes. Even if you are not struggling, try and retweet these posts, like you sharing and putting out the good stuff out there. Other people that you may not know that struggling may see that and it could help save a life or help turn somebody's life around. So make sure you support blokes. Um, Again, if you've got mental health, it's okay to talk. It's okay not to be okay. Um, Seek out any help that's available to you. Um, Make sure you hit like. Make sure you hit subscribe on YouTube. I've been Katie Johansson. More importantly, Tom from Blokes. Thank you again and all the best in the future. Thank you, my friend. Bye for now.